It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and Jasmine from the jasminebrand.com is here with me. Yes. And it's a mastery of comedy time, and we have one of the masters of comedy here with us. Hey, hey. Mark Theobald. I'm in the house. What's going on, Way Up with Yee? I haven't seen you in a while. I know, and I was telling Jasmine that the reason why I know a lot of people who I know is because of Mark. Really? When it comes to comedy. I like, so. I know Dean Edwards... Right. who was up here recently because of you. I know Donnell Rawlings, actually, because of you. Right, really? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. You're, yeah. The, you're the plug? You're the I am the plug. You're the plug. I know John Laster, and I see you have on your Blap shirt because you've invested into his app, Blap. Nice. Blap, that's right, it's Juneteenth, baby. I know him because <laughs> of you. Everybody, a lot of people early on, I used to actually... Um, Promote. Yeah, Mark had this comedy show he used to do at the Boston Comedy Club. It was him, there was another comedian, Todd Allen Lynn, right. and Dean Edwards, Dean Edwards that's right. and they were like, "Hey, do you want to come on board?" It was really Mark. Yes, you and Jizza. Yeah, yeah, that's wow. right. It was you and Jizza. It's a long so, time ago. Long time. Wow. That club is now a Chinese food store. Oh, <laughs> it's a damn. Chinese restaurant, and I think it closed actually. So I don't even know what it is anymore. It wasn't that easy to to promote early on like that. Nah, that's that's with a fly. We had flyers. Remember that? Yeah, we had flyers. We, to go, we went to where your brothers. Pa- where would y'all pass out the flyers? Uh, everywhere. Yeah. At the you club. Know, they still, actually, they still do flyers. Do they? Yeah. Because the other day I was walking past somewhere and, and it was like a Mexican restaurant and they have comedy downstairs. Oh, nice. Right, yeah. They do. Oh, yes, okay. I was with you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those and, are Barkers, mm-hmm. yeah. We, and, used to, we used to do that What's it too, called? Bark- barkers. So barkers. They, they basically want to get stage time. You... You oh. got to get a certain amount of people in. So yeah, you, that's what I was telling yep. Jasmine. So yeah. I was like, a lot of times it's the comedians themselves. Yes. So can, let's talk about Mark Theobald. You're from Brooklyn. Yes, indeed. Brooklyn in the house. What's going on? East Flatbush. And your early days of comedy, because I know you started off in pharmaceutical sales. I did. I was a pharmaceutical <laughs> like sales Like real pharmaceutical sales? Or like real, drugs? No, real okay. pharmaceutical sales. Oh, yeah, I was, I was like, were you a drug, drug dealer? dealer? <laughs> not cool. I was selling uh, pharmaceutical sales. Uh, I was a pharmaceutical sales rep, and I did not go to work. I was doing comedy. But I had a lot of doctors who really liked the fact that I was a comedian, and they would hook me up, and it was it was it was dope. So mm-hmm. I I I was like for three months I didn't go to work, and uh, I remember one time that my my manager called me and said, "Yo, I gotta talk to you." I was like, "I'm gonna get fired because I didn't go to work for three months." He sat me down. And he said, "Look, you are the top sales rep on the East Coast." And wow. He was a check, and he gave me a big check. And it, I felt so guilty because I wasn't working. I, I decided to quit and do comedy. You would be a terrible time. scammer. Yeah, I, I was. I felt guilty. So I was like, <laughs> wow. I said, I can't do this. I was like, yeah. He was like, yo, I want you to give a speech to the other sales. I was like, dude, I didn't do nothing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I was like, <laughs> but that's amazing. You were the top sales rep. Didn't go to work on didn't the East work. Coast. It was just, it was just the, the fact that I told my doctors, I was like, yo, man, I, I got, I got these gigs. I can't be here. I was doing colleges. And I said, could y'all write? And they were just writing for me. I was just lucky, man. I mean, blessed, whatever you want to call it. But uh, they probably liked your personality yeah. too. They probably, maybe they did. But uh, I got it, it. It gave me that gave me the confidence to say, you know what? I'm just gonna do this comedy, man. And I quit. And it was like right after 9-11 so everybody on my job was like yo he really took that 9-11 hard kid he just, <laughs> he just, he just quit <laughs> like, I'm like no I, was like, I, I wanna do comedy I was like, I was like they didn't get it but I was like alright whatever so I started doing comedy and you're also like the um, Steph Curry of comedy cause you're the nice guy I guess I don't know. I don't Are know you? I, am. I guess I am. The I nice know. guy, the family guy. I am the family the guy. Yeah. So let me, because comedy is can be a cutthroat business. It is, right? Yeah, it can be, yes. But somehow, I feel like that has has that affected you because I don't know if it has. Because uh, I feel like people really respect you, yeah. and you don't bother anybody. I feel like no, but I don't know if you've had situations where people have tried to do underhanded. No, things. I mean I've had I've had underhanded things. People not pay me. I mean I've <laughs> I've had I've had incidents. Matter of fact, with Donnell, we flew me Donnell, Don, uh, Dean Edwards, and Leslie Jones. We all flew to Alabama. And got paid zero dollars. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, we no. had to come back home, and we all did not want to go do that gig. And to this day, we still laugh about it because <laughs> the guy was the sweetest. He was the nicest guy, the and sweetest. he would just he would disarm us by complimenting us. Mm. So we were like, "Dude, yo, what's up with the show?" Because we like <laughs> we sitting in the hotel, like, "Yo, what's up, man? Where's the show at?" And I'm the nice guy, so I was like, "Let me get Leslie," because Leslie always she just. You know, yeah. I was like, Leslie, talk to this dude. She's like, I'm not, I'm not, I ain't scared of no, whatever. I was like, yo, dude. She just went up to him like, what's up with the show? What's going on? He's like, Leslie, let me just first say that you are an incredible comedian. <laughs> and <laughs> your comedy is reminiscent of Mom's Mabley. And five seconds in, Leslie was like, all right. <laughs> I was like, Les. I was like, what happened? What happened to the 
Right. I was like, what happened? And finally, Donnell was the person that was like, look, I don't care about the compliments, dude. What's up with the show? I can see that. And he was just like, we ain't going to have one, man. I'm really sorry. <laughs> and I, I, I was just like, you know <laughs> oh what? I was goodness. like, you know what? Let's, let's just go home. And we just went home. Did he, he pay, they pay for y'all travel? They pay for our travel, but we just we didn't get Is any money. Is it free trip to Alabama? And, yeah, yeah, <laughs> free trip to Alabama. That we none of us wanted to go on. We were all literally we were making money at the time. We was like, why are we doing this gig? And we was like, yeah, we said we do it, and we did it because we liked the guy. Mm-hmm. We was like, the guy was cool. So, He's so complimentary. I good. Yeah. I did like that's that. a good lesson learned though. Yeah, for everybody. What's the lesson? To not go unless you get some of your money. Yeah, you get, get your, your money, money up front. Or yeah. the, the lesson is also, if you be really nice, you probably can, you know, get some get stuff. over on people. Oh, you can. Absolutely. If, if he got over on us. He mm-hmm. did. He really did. He's a charming dude. And you and, and Todd Lynn were really good friends. Absolutely. That was and, my man. And he did pass away. He did. How yeah. did that affect you? Uh, it was uh, it was, uh, I, it was bad for me, but, uh, you know, Todd had cancer. Uh, he beat cancer, which uh, which is a lot of people don't know. He ended up dying of a heart attack. Uh, he beat cancer. He ended up living with me and my wife, Nancy, who you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he was going blind at the time. And Todd was just the funniest. He was like one of the funniest dudes I've ever met, and mm-hmm. he just he was just funny. And when he was living with us, he, <laughs> I mean, he had a development deal. And he had a fur coat. He had nothing left but his fur coat walking around my house. I remember and when he bought was, his car. He had his car. He had nothing left but that fur coat. And yeah. it was just, he was just a funny dude. Man. Even before he uh, passed away, he was going on stage, could not see, would go up on stage with his cane and be like, yo, I got a cane. I kind of can see, but can't see. So the reason I got the cane is if I don't have the cane and I fall, people will make fun of me. But if I got a cane... They will help me up, and I was like, that was so honest. <laughs> that's like, funny. Yo. I said, yo, I said, that's why I got it. But he passed away. I was actually working on a cruise ship. I could not even go to the funeral. Uh, this past year, I got to go to the, his gravesite, and I just saw his mother a month ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but I got to go to his gravesite. We cleaned off his gravesite. I said, what's up to his? I saw his sister. We was in Cincinnati. Matter of fact, me, Tracy. Shout out to Roberto Tracy Vanderpool, Morgan. Tracy Morgan. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Pat Brown, we all went to his gravesite, man, to visit him and pay our respects to him. So, uh, yeah, he was a good friend. And I feel like he was a misunderstood person, too, because some people thought he was so mean. He was. I'm not going to okay. sit there. I can't, I can't sugarcoat what <laughs> no, who he yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. Todd is who he is. He, <laughs> he was a mean dude. And, but if he liked you, he liked you. You know right. what I'm saying? And I, I saw through it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, uh, and he was a good dude. Now, anyway. Tracy Morgan is another person. You just mentioned him. Yes. And to be clear, Mark is also... Or was a writer on the last OG. Last OG, okay. four seasons, man. Yes. I was Which co is a EP success. on that yeah. joint. So we uh, we did a we did a good thing. Mm-hmm. We wanted to do five seasons to wrap it up, and TBS was like, "Yeah, we're not having it." <laughs> so, good, though. <laughs> so we did four. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did it. We had a good time, though, man. It was a great great time writing for Tracy and Tiffany and I mean Alan Maldonado. We had a bunch of people on that show that were very talented. And we had a great time, man. It was a great learning experience for me. And uh, You and Tracy actually started off together doing comedy. Yes. I started doing comedy at the Uptown Comedy Club. He was one of the, if not the first comics I've ever met. And uh, Tracy was always uh, prophetic. And I remember just trying to get into the Uptown Comedy Club. And he'd be like, yo, Ma, I can't wait till I get on HBO. And I was like... Dude, I literally, this is like my first day. I was like, I just want to get in this club. I was like, why are you talking about HBO? He's right. like, no, I'm going to get on HBO. You see? I was like, all right. All right. And he did. I was, he was just, he was very focused. Uh, at the time, I did not know. But he was just, he just got married. He had three kids. And he's trying to go away from the drug game. Mm-hmm. So his urgency was very urgent. Okay. And you could see it when he hit on stage. It was like, dude, what is wrong with this dude? But he just wanted to get away from that life. And he did. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, and I think the honesty on stage is something that people could relate to. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. And uh, Tracy does that. Uh, and I've been touring with him for years. So it's, uh, it's, it's a good thing. And that's a great thing to see. I was telling Dean Edwards the other day when he was up here, I was. it's very rare that you see people that started in something together and then... You know, decades later are still. Yeah, oh no, I mean, we not, I mean it, it ain't been all smooth ride with me and Tracy because Tracy used to go hard <laughs> drinking in the clubs. I could not, we got kicked out of so many clubs. I've seen Tracy randomly out and about with his shirt off. Yes, going crazy. yo, I literally, I've known this dude for over 20 <laughs> something years. I've never seen him take his shirt off, but his shirt would come off at every time we was at the club. I was like, how does he keep doing that? I was like, I don't, but we got kicked out of so many clubs and I'm not. I ain't that dude. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, it was like, I did I did the first special with him, and after that, I was like, I can't do this no more. And we just went our separate ways. I was doing my thing. He was doing his. And I came back, uh, we came back together after 30 Rock, 
And he's like, yo, I got to do a special. I was like, he said, you right? I said, I'm always writing. So That was the Comedy Central out. special? Uh, we did the Comedy Central yeah. special first. Yeah, and that was another Comedy Central special. I was there. Right? I was there for that. Yeah, oh, that wow. was another one. That was, uh-huh. uh, so we did that one, and uh, we just we just uh, taped another one. It's going to come out on HBO. I don't know when, but soon. Oh, we'll I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're working on a TV show, but the writer strike is messing that up. I was I just about to ask you. Writer know. strike is messing that up, <laughs> y'all. How is it affecting you, personally? It's me- well, it's personally because we was in the midst of pitching the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, for Tracy for CBS and Paramount and now we're stuck we can't talk to CBS CBS can't talk to us that's the way it is until we get our money we <laughs> want our money it is. Mm-hmm. so we want our money and let's be clear okay. let's be clear writers need to be paid mm-hmm. there is no Netflix there is no HBO without the writers right. we are the roots of the tree that bears that fruit so understand that are you concerned about AI Yes, absolutely. How so, specifically? A- specifically, this is what it is. AI, what it does, it's on, it basically takes anything that's on the internet and can compile a script together. Mm-hmm. Now, will that script be shootable? Heck no, it will not. But what it can do, a studio can sit there and go, well, here's the here's the basis or the skeleton of the script I want. Now, Mark, you rewrite it. Right. But I'm not going to pay you the to- full fee I would have paid mm. you. I'm going to pay you a finder's fee or just a writer's fee and I'm the one that, that wrote it, so I'm the creator of yeah. this. And they didn't create it. The AI created it. So we're not going to have that. It's not going to happen. We're not, and that's not going to be negotiable, so I don't understand. Uh, and Netflix, y'all got to stop being so cocky. Netflix is really cocky. They're like, hey, we got plenty of stuff in the can. Uh, I remember Blockbuster, and they were really cocky, too. Ooh, that's a fact. <laughs> and uh, don't become next Blockbuster, because I trust me. I feel like I me, saw a Blockbuster store reopening recently. No, they got one, it's I think, like in like Oregon like a... or something like that. But Uh-oh. that's it. it they, they finished. <laughs> they got cocky. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And and, and uh, Netflix is feeling themselves, because they're on top. I get you. You're on top. Mm-hmm. You're feeling yourself. But without writers, you don't have anything. That's a and fact. And unlike Amazon, you ain't got no backup. Amazon got Amazon Prime. Disney yeah. got Disney World. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, all these are Apple got, they got iPhones. Netflix, what else it's you got? It's just Netflix. Yeah, it's just yeah. Netflix. <laughs> Without writers, you're done. So yeah. let somebody else come in and go, you know what? I'm going to give these writers what they want. You are finished. Understand that. What was your experience um, like at The Last OG? Because that was, like you said, four seasons, four, four seasons. successful it was seasons. absolutely a blast. I learned a lot. man. And this is part of the reason we're striking as well is that writers are not allowed on set like they used to be. Like, if you write an episode back in the day, you would be on set, because it makes sense. I wrote the episode, Mm -hmm. I could tell the actors what to do, I could tell the directors what to do. Right now, they're not letting anybody on set. Now, because of my relationship with Tracy, I was on set from day one. Why would they not let any? I'm just curious. What's money. the reason? It's all about money. Oh. It's so all about pay paying. They got to pay you. They don't okay. want to pay. So they're like, oh, let's save some money. Let's save some money. And understand it. I'm a, I'm a writer, so I, I got to look at the point of view of everybody that's in my script, good or bad, right? So bad people right now is the studios. And they're looking at it like, we going to save money by not paying these writers. But what you don't get... It's like, I'm going to pay Shonda Rhimes. I'm going to pay these other big writers. But where do you think they developed from? Right. They developed the way I developed, the way right. being on set. By this, that's the way you, you, you're you literally cutting yourself off at the knees. And they don't get it. So it's like, uh, I think they will get it because we're not going to go back until we get a, a deal that is agreeable. So Yeah, I've heard people saying they think maybe like September. Yeah, September. We're going we're gonna to see the, the SAG right now is out. Uh, their contract is up on the 30th of June. If they join in with us, it'll be over sooner than later. But, you know, I'm not going to fault SAG if they make a deal with them. Because that's their, you know, that's their thing. Right. It's that's 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 separate the from us. It's, uh, they got to eat. So I, I'm not going to sit there and go, hey, y'all got to stand with us. They've been standing with us on the line right now. I've been on the lines. They're out there. So they they, they supporting us. And, I, and I'm, I'm proud that they are. If they make a deal, they make a deal. The director's already made a deal. Fine. You made a deal. Mm-hmm. But let's see you direct something without a script. And you are always on the road, so does this mean now you have more family time? Uh, yeah, I do. Which I, I you know, what I'm saying I, I get to spend more time with my wife Nancy and my son Mateo, who's 11. I can't believe it. He's 11. I can't believe. I remember when Nancy grown. was pregnant. Wow. Yes, I know, right? He's 11 years old. Me and his wife used to actually even go to the same gym. We yes, all did. Yeah. that's right. That's uh, what's the name? Crunch. Of that? Crunch. Yeah, crunch. <laughs> <laughs> crunch. Yeah, we did go to Crunch on Flatbush. Everybody went there. Dean, Every, Todd, everywhere. everybody. I remember Common was in there sometimes. Yeah, Common used to. Be in there. Wow. Okay. And uh, what's his name from The Wire? Oh, 
Marlo. Oh, God. Oh, Jamie, Jamie Hector. Hector. Jamie Hector. Jamie Hector used I to be up in there, I just hosted his um, fundraiser. Yeah, cool dude. Jamie Hector used to be up in there, too. So it's, uh, yeah, a lot of Small people used to world. go to that gym. Yeah, no, that gym used to be lit. It used to be popping. It was popping like, back you know in the what? day. what? I don't think I can come here anymore. <laughs> it was too much. It's you like a up, scene. You end up going to the gym and just having a conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, it was a lot of talking going on in that gym and no working. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. And then you got to look right. Yeah, you got to look cool. Before you gotta, <laughs> I got to go to another gym to go to that gym. You know what I'm saying? That's funny. So I gotta I look work good. out to be able to work out That's all right. What I'm right. <laughs> now, so. Mark, for people who are coming up in the comedy game now, it's yes. different than when you it first is. came up. It is. It's totally different now. It's like, I, I was actually talking about this with John. I was like, man, if we started today, would, would we be in clubs or would we be on TikTok or. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's a, it's a different. And I, I know a lot of comics that are my age or, or came up in my time. Look at the TikTok and the and the and all these other things. It's, I'm just like it's just different. That's mm-hmm. all it is. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, if you can reach your audience, you can reach your audience. You know what I'm saying? They don't have to do what we had to do, which was go through promoters, and you could just reach to your audience. Which you I don't think have to is, hand out flyers, right? You, you ain't gotta hand out no time. flyers. Did you ever have to do that? Uh, I. I, not Earlier. really. Yeah. I got because <laughs> the the thing is, I started in the mainstream clubs, but I went over to the black clubs. Mainstream clubs are always bringers, like the flyers. Mm-hmm. You got to bring, and I could. I ran out of people, so <laughs> I ran funny. into this black comic. He's like, "Yo, go to the Uptown." I said, "What's the Uptown?" He's the Uptown Comedy Club. It's just the black club. I went up there, and I was like, "I met Monteria Ivy." I was like, "Yo, how many people I got to bring?" He's like, "You just, just got to bring funny." And I was like, "What?" I was nice. like, "Oh, okay." And I was just so I just started doing the black clubs because all I had to do was be funny. So I was that's like, okay. so interesting the difference, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's just a strictly business thing in right. the mainstream white clubs where the more people you bring, you make us some money and you can get on the stage. Right, and I understand but, it. I get it. But, <laughs> but in the black clubs, you got to just be funny. You got to just be funny. They had the crowd. They had the crowd. It was like mm-hmm. we got a crowd. Mm-hmm. And they had the crowd because they always had yeah, funny. Yeah, we had the, we had the crowd. So we just need you to be funny, and that's it. And it was. That was back in the day when you get booed by the comedians. Back in the day. it was it was tough back did then. Did you did you guys get paid like for those kind of clubs? Oh yeah, the black club. Yeah, mm-hmm. at that time you was making more more money in the black clubs than you were in the like mainstream clubs. Like how much? Clubs. Uh, buck uh, a show, and it was just in the I think in the mainstream it was on the weekends it was seventy five. So okay. you could if you could do both, which I ended up doing. Cause I saw I used to see Tony Woods. Shout out to Tony Woods. He's yeah, like I a saw pioneer just, in this game. He, he used to do both, and I used to see him just clocking. I was like, okay, I, that's what I want to do. <laughs> and uh, so I imitated him <laughs> in terms how, of how just going back. How long is a set back. in like, uh, those clubs? In the clubs, like uh, 15 to 20 minutes. So the red That's good for $100. On. Yeah, it's it's good. <laughs> and then once you get in the clubs, you really in them. I mean, there were times I was doing like seven spots in one night. I was just bouncing. Yeah. Bouncing. Club, 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 club. And I'm just, and it's just, and I remember one time I was hosting at, at uh, Caroline's with Tommy Davis. He was like, dude, you coming back to the show late. He said, "Why?" I said, "I just want to get this money." He said, "Just enjoy the show." And I was like, <laughs> "I was like, I was like, you're right." That's I was like, hey, "He was just, it's like you're killing yourself for what?" I was like, "It's like, I was like, yeah, you're right." And I, I'm, I, I stopped doing that. And I was just like, you know, what? I'm gonna just do a couple spots, mm-hmm. and that's I'm not trying to do seven, eight spots. It doesn't make sense. Is it early on you think though, if you were gonna tell like a uh, up and coming comic, do as many spots as you can? Absolutely. Absolutely. Do as many spots. That's the only way you're going to get better. And I, t- I talk to people who are TikTok people. Like, now, the TikTok thing, this is the bad thing about the TikTok. You get an audience so you can fill a club. I said, we go to clubs. We're doing clubs with Tracy. They, we got a bunch of TikTok people coming mm-hmm. behind us. The problem is they don't have a set oh, to, okay. uh, to get that club, to get right. the people. So they got to they gotta work on a set. Mm-hmm. And how do you work on a set when you already got the crowd, but now you got to work it out? So how do you do that? So I, my suggestion to them is always just go to a club and be just, yo, if even it's an open mic. Unannounced. Yeah, just go in there, do five minutes, ten minutes. Just work your set up, and then, you know, and then you can take it on the road. That is true, because Country Wayne was up here, and he is really popular for the sketches that he does online, but he does do stand-up, and he said he was secretly, like, working on his stand-up set right. so that people didn't think, you know, sometimes uh, comics can also feel like they have an issue with the younger, more popular Instagram viral yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, comedians. comedians. Mm-hmm. And so for him, he was like, look, I knew I had to work on my set. I knew I had to bring it. So right. he secretly worked on that so that when it was time for him to go do his comedy show run, right. he can go on tour and still kill the audience. Exactly. And, and people don't you expect just want, it. You just want to be, you want to be, you know, and I think the the ones that want to do stand up, they want to be good. They reach out and, you know, and, uh, and they'll be like, oh, what do I do? And I just I give advice in terms of what to do. And I'm, but my main advice is get on stage. That's the only way you're going to mm-hmm. get used to it. You know what I'm right. saying? So you got to keep getting them reps in. Now, you also keep it kind of clean. I, I can. 
<laughs> do you, do you I do. Ah, uh, rarely. I don't. I don't like cursing because I don't cuss when I usually talk. Yeah, right. No. So oh, I'm like, sense. why would I start cussing on stage? So <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't really. Cuss. Why have you been like that always, though? Like, where do you think that comes from? Ah, uh, because comedy can be like a dirty. Foul it can't. It type can be. I don't. Space. I don't. I just don't think. I don't think it's accepted with me. You know what I'm saying? I got because <laughs> you look underst- like you don't curse. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly, because people don't understand how many dirty jokes I write for Tracy. Right. Mm. That I can't do them. Okay. So you I have can d- try dirty, You have dirty mind. deep in deep in here and here. Right. right. But it's like if you're, if you're a writer, if you're a writer, I don't, I don't, I can write for people. Right. Mm-hmm. Like if I'm writing a script, I'm writing all different kind of characters. Right. To me, I just look at Tracy as a character. So it's like, mm-hmm. okay, let's talk about what we're gonna talk about. We gonna talk about whatever kind of sex he wants to talk about. <laughs> That's what we gonna talk about. So let's do it. And I do it in character. And I come up, and they call, as Tracy and the other comics call me, when I come up with the dirty stuff, they go, oh, here comes Dark Mark. I'm like, yeah, here it comes. <laughs> Dark Mark is in the building. So listen, when you when you come up with, like, material or jokes or, you know, that kind of thing, so do you come up, with, do you have in mind first, okay, I'm going to come up with something for Tracy, or do you have a joke and you're like, oh, this fits for such and such? Or uh, is it both? It's With, with Tracy, I just, I just listen to him mm-hmm. and him talk. And I go, okay, yeah. And then he'll he'll just Tracy sometimes will just come up with stuff that just you know I want to use the word flabbergasted. It's like what? I'm like, what am I doing? What am I doing with that? And then he'll just start talking, and I go, okay, I know it. I, I remember you working with Tracy and him doing his stand up, and you're like, he didn't use nothing. We even yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yo, yo, he'll be off all script the all the time. I'm like, dude, this ain't even in the script. What are you doing? It's like, yo, I'm just I'm just off the off the cup. I'm That's like. Hilarious. But it's uh, it's weird because people people see that and it's so bizarre because people will see the stuff I write for them. I write a lot of jokes for them, man. It's like I've been doing this is my fourth special mm-hmm. that I, I wrote with them, uh, and um, it's like my set is so different. <laughs> than right. his, and then, they're like, but we I still think we laugh at the same things. Let it's me just, ask you this because sometimes people have an issue with saying, "Oh, I write for this person," or "This person has somebody that writes with them." Right. Do most comedians have people? Like, you know, when they're doing specials, write with them, or do people normally do it on their own? And is that something that's looked down upon, like in hip hop? You're like, oh, he has a writer. Oh, that's yeah, a good. I, I don't know. I don't know for comedy. It's, 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 uh, it's different. You know what I'm saying? Richard Pryor had Paul Mooney. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So uh, if you watch Paul Mooney as a writer, I go, I see where he influenced Richard because he's becoming. Paul Mooney is very political. Yeah. And you saw Richard start to become political <laughs> after he went to Oakland. And uh, you definitely see the influence of uh, Paul on him. So it's, uh, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't know. I don't think it's looked down upon. It's, it's Tracy got a lot of things to do, man. So right, it's like, right. you got to yeah, no, keep it. turning I just out know. these specials. It's a lot to do. But the people that, that do do it themselves, that's hats off to them. Now, another thing I want Mark to talk about, and this is a more personal thing. You yeah. have this wheat allergy. <laughs> yes, I'm gluten-free. Shout out to me. <laughs> I've been gluten-free. I'm an OG <clears throat> Gluten free. So I was gluten free like 15 years ago. Now, it how was, did you find out? Because there thing. might be people who have no idea, like what's My going. My stomach was a mess, and I went to a doctor. I went to this this like holistic doctor. She was like, "Yeah, sounds like you allergic to wheat." And I was like, "Yeah, that ain't it." Because I like pizza and beer. Right? So I was <laughs> like, "I know that ain't it." And she was like, "No, nah, I think that's it." And I was like, "Okay." She said, "Cut it out for a month and see what happens." I did that for a month. I started feeling better, and I was like, "Damn." Mm. Then I did it for two months. I started feeling real good. I went back to her like, yo, can I go back and eat it? And she said, I wouldn't advise it. Right. And I was like, man. Because wheat is in everything. I know. I said, let me try. I tried and I got sick and I was like, dang it. I just mm. had to go cold turkey. I was yeah, I, Let me tell you something. I was like the first person <laughs> <In> black <laughs> that was gluten free. It was me and five white women in aisle seven of Whole Foods. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I look like a really healthy pimp. It was it was ridiculous. That's funny. Nobody, nobody, and nobody now, believed me. My own. Everybody's like gluten free, gluten. But if you don't have a wheat allergy, you don't really have to be gluten free, right? No, you don't have to. But I like the fact that everybody jumped on board because it got more products for me. More so I was like, now. yes. So it's much better. Because I remember he told me this, and I had never heard of such a thing. Yeah, I was like, yo, y'all was all clowning me. Everybody clowned me. Ty clown. My mom mother didn't believe. She's like, no, you ain't. <laughs> You like lemon cake. I know you like <laughs> lemon cake. Y'all say, Mama, I'm allergic. No, you not. I'm like, okay. Now, how does your wife Nancy feel if you make jokes about her and your relationship? Uh, she don't mind. Okay. If it's true, she don't mind. <laughs> she don't mind. Have you yeah. ever had to run something a joke past her? No. I just I just uh I just do it in front of her. <laughs> <laughs> and then she goes, Oh, okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> is she funny? What's her personality like? She's funny. She's funny when she wants to be. Yeah. Uh, she's she, 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 she trying to write jokes for me now. She's like, you got to talk about the fact that she, she don't like apologizing. She's so Brooklyn. Uh, uh, she can't. She, I don't know what that is. Thing. That's a woman thing. Yeah, she can't, it's a woman thing. She can't apologize. I'm like, just say sorry. What is wrong with you? Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know I ain't mean that. <laughs> you can't, not, that's not an apology. You know I ain't mean that. It's, that I'm that sorry. That kind of is an apology. I'm sorry is an apology. You nah, hear I the ain't words. mean that. You want to hear the words? Yes, I want to hear. Cause I say it all the time. I'm be right. like, yo, I'm sorry. You might say it too much, and then now we don't take you seriously. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, because it's like, you know, some people who, somebody who apologizes all the time, you're like, he's just saying that yeah. so we can No, just... no, no, no. I mean it, though. I mean it. I mean it. I, I, I mean it. Like, if, what do you mess up that you have to apologize for? If I, No, because sometimes I'll flip on my wife, and for, especially if I do it in front of my son. I'll make sure to apologize in front of him. So I can't imagine knows. you flipping yeah, over. Yes. What's, the, what's yes. the last thing you flipped over that was <laughs> dark ridiculous? Mark. Uh, Here comes Dark Mark. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that my wife did not apologize. <laughs> <laughs> when she spilt the bunch of water onto my notes, oh. and I was like, "Yo," and she just said, "You Oops. know, I ain't mean that." And I was like, "Yo," <laughs> and I was like, "I said, I said, I'm gonna calm down. I got the note. I'm trying to dry my notes, and this is for like, this. <laughs> I'm drying like, my notes." And I was like, "Yo, you ain't, so you ain't gonna say you ain't gonna apologize?" I, I, I did. No, 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 you didn't. You said, Oopsie. "You know, I ain't mean that." Well, you know what that means. No, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, hold up. So you going to say that's it? And she was like, uh, I was like, okay. All right, she sorry. Said, she said, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I don't think she ever did. <laughs> still, She's still to stop it to this day. She was <laughs> like, you know. I'm a big fan of apologizing when I mess up just because I think it catches people off guard. Mm. Yeah, that's it. And then what else can you wrong. say after that? Because sometimes you say sorry and then people still want to keep it going. You're like, all right, I said sorry. <laughs> that's it. I said I'm sorry. Let it go. Yeah. Well, well, Mark, where can people find you if they want to uh, uh, keep check. in contact, watch you on the road, see the uh, show that you have that's going to be coming probably yeah, we got, after we the got, we got, we got, we got, We got some heat coming. So uh, we check, check me out on Instagram. And right now it's Comedy Family Man instead of Mark Theobald. It's about to be changed back to Mark Theobald. I changed it to Comedy Family Man because on tour, when it's like <laughs> 2,000 people, nobody can spell Mark Theobald. So I had to change yeah, it to, Theobald. yeah, it's, it's, it's too hard. So I put Comedy Family Man. That's so funny. I didn't uh, think about that. Yeah, it's, I like, it's too I like hard, your man. Um, Instagram name. Comedy Family Man? You I like, like that. Why you want to change it? I, no, I people just... Don't know your he name? wants his name. Hey, I just wanted my name back. Comedy Family Man is easier. Yeah. It, it is easier. But you also want so people to know your I'll name. I think about leaving it. But yeah. I want people... Yeah, I want people to know my name. It was All just right. uh, on stage. People it's like, basically just Mark with a C. Mark with a C. That's Theobald. A, that's a big issue. How then do you Theobald. spell Theobald? T-H-E-O-B-A-L-D. Theobald. Mm. Yeah. Mark... Theobald. Theobald, yes. Comedy right. Family Man. Yes. Well, Mark Theobald, Comedy Family Man, thank you so much for coming Thank through. you so much. Honestly, and like a real friend in real life. Yes, it's- it is. And can I give a tip? This is Juneteenth that we are in, so I want to support Blap, which is it's, it's selfish reasons. It is my, it's an app that I'm invested in mm-hmm. that me and John Lasseter, John Lasseter created it, uh, and all it does is it finds, it helps you find black-owned businesses wherever you are. So wherever you are in the United States, you pull this app up, you can find a black-owned business. Support black-owned business, not just for Juneteenth, but because it, it helps. I love it because I have black owned businesses. <laughs> That's, there you go. I want you to support. And support them. There so, we go. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Mark Theobald. Appreciate you. It's Mastery of Comedy, and he is definitely a master. It's Way Up with Angela Yee.